How important was takedown defense? It was very important. Yeah, I figured I figured he was gonna try to take me down. I was a little surprised that I uh, that he got it in my legs that easily. I was really mad. About, I'm still mad about it, but it's okay. He made me work. You think that played a pivotal role in your victory tonight? Uh, with defending his takedowns? Yeah. Of course, you never went off your back, so it was very important. Uh, just as, as a confidence stopper for him to defend his takedowns, even though he got in quickly, you know, he had a great body lock, his hands were locked, and uh, you know, he threw Jason Knight around with his hands locked, and he had his hands locked around me, and he couldn't, you know, he couldn't get the takedown. How important was the win for you tonight overall? Uh, the victory tonight over Lamas was very important for me. He's a veteran. Uh, it's, it's a fight that was really reminding me of uh, the Derek Elkins fight. Uh, with Derek Elkins, I was winning by a landslide in every round, and I kept pressing the action because you know uh, I have a me-me mentality when I'm fighting, when I'm training, I'm very competitive, so I don't want to give the guy an inch to breathe. Uh, so it's very important to show my championship material in the in the Lamas fight. You know, I was thinking about George St. Pierre. You know, he's he's such a he's a, such a champion. He knows when to push, when to stop. Uh, so with this fight, that you know, that that was in my mind, and so was the Elkins. You know, not over pressing, not over, not being over aggressive. Do you feel like you've come all the way back from that fight? I mean, that was the only loss you've experienced in your career. Two big wins in a row now. Do you feel like you've kind of got back to where you need to be from that Elkins fight? For sure. Uh, I don't. Uh, it was yeah, the Elkins uh, fight hurt me emotionally, uh, just because uh, again uh, I have uh, I'm very competitive, and uh, especially when I fought like the way I did and and uh, gave it away at the very end. Uh, yeah, I feel like I'm back where I need to be. Yeah, not even back where I need to be, I'm where I need to be. Uh, as, as my mindset, uh, with the camp, with the people I have around me, and uh, I'm only gonna get better. For the longest time, you were kind of called the best prospect in the featherweight division. Do you feel like you've shed that label now and you are now a legit contender? I mean, you just beat you know, a former top yeah. contender, perennial top five guy. Do you feel like you're now in that contender role? For sure, I beat the number seven guy, and uh, I feel like that puts me in number seven spot. Uh, it just makes sense. Uh, I I fought everybody, anybody who I fought. Uh, I can't remember who really gave me a hard fight. Uh, I think, unless I'm mistaken, I think uh, Lamas is the only one guy who's like, really, you know, really giving me a fight, and I still came out on top. Uh, and the prospect, yeah, it's man. I remember speaking to Ariel in 2014. Uh, Frank Edgar walked past by us, and I was considered a prospect back then. So I don't mind it. Uh, I'm walking one foot in front of the other, and you know I work, I work my way into the top ten, so I'm where I need to be. You mentioned post fight on the notes that you thought maybe Charles Oliveira would be a good opponent. Is that a name you like, or are you thinking maybe someone that's already in the rankings, like a Josh Emmett or maybe a Cub Swanson, like somebody a little higher ranked than, than you know than maybe an Oliveira? Does Oliveira? Who was the second name you mentioned? Uh, uh, Swanson or uh, oh. Josh Emmett? Uh, I think Josh Emmett got uh, beat. Oh no, he beat Lamas. Uh, he just lost his last fight, and I think Swanson did as well. So it's okay. Yeah, yeah. Either, either way, they both lost their last fight, so I'd rather not fight a loser. No, no offense. Uh, yeah. So Oliveira would be a more. Uh, he's he's fought, he's been, he was a top ten in the forty five division. He couldn't make it, so he went up to fifty five. Beat beat the beat a rank. I don't know Clay Guida. Uh, just a fight. You know, I overheard him saying after his fight that you know he wants to win the fight title at forty five and. I'm right there, and if he wants, he can get it. It's the story behind the mustache. <laughs> it's not, not Olivier. He's a 55 in the UFC. He always mentioned to me at uh, you know during the workout, man, you got you got to get a stash, you got to get a stash. And uh, I was getting ready to shave, you know, I had a beard, and I was getting ready to shave, so I just shaved the sides first. I was like, man, it doesn't look too bad. And uh, and then I saw a picture of my grandpa, and he had one too. So and it looks good on me. Are you gonna keep it? I, I think so. Uh, I think, yeah, yeah, I like it. There, there seems to be like a mustache movement at Tri-State. <laughs> there's someone else that I'm looking yeah. at. Uh, Who else has one? Man, uh, just two guys at the dorms just got theirs. Okay. I think they're seeing their luck with the ladies, so yeah. everybody's jumping on the bag when you get it. The, the chicks love it. <laughs> what about you? Any luck with the ladies? I always have good luck with ladies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've been asking all the fighters tonight who have come by. Uh, my vote on the weigh-ins is morning, definitely. I think uh, guys, it seems like the top dogs in the UFC are missing weight. 
uh, you know, they're hanging out during fight week, looking fly, where maybe they should be, you know, resting and prepping for their weight cut. I think they just got to, the professionals got to be professionals. If we do that evening weigh-ins, I don't even know how we could do that again or how we did it before because, like last night, we came in to face off in the evening. We got here at 4.30. We probably didn't face off till 7, left by 7.30. I mean, you have enough time to eat one meal, a little snack, and you back to bed. That's not much of a rehydration. I think guys just need to get their stuff together, uh, need to be professionals, pay the professionals. That they, you know, it's a professional sport, so you, gotta, you, know, you, gotta, you just got to treat like that. If you need somebody to help you, go out and get a professional to help you. I do it, and if I can do it, they can do it. Yeah. You don't see him around as much. I'm not even sure. You, you may be one of his, his only MMA clients. Special. Is there, do you know why that is? Is he transitioning out of the sport? Uh, I don't think so. I think, uh, I think a lot of guys, again, it comes down to they don't want to pay. They waste their money maybe on other things instead of themselves. Uh, Mike's, you know, he's one of the best and maybe he's not the cheapest. But he's the best. Whoever's ever worked with him has made weight. Uh, he's never had nobody ma miss weight. And now he's very choosy with he who he works with. And I just happen to be, uh, you know, I've been working with him since 2014. And uh, you know, I'm loyal to him. And I, I, I can't see myself working with nobody else. I love the guy. He's like an uncle to me. And uh, I think guys just need to go out and hire a professional. I mean, you all had a professional work with him. I don't know what happened. It's uh, it's not good, and you know you saw Khabib, he was working I think with a similar professional, they didn't make weight, uh, so I think guys just need to grow up and you know Kelvin, I saw this guy is like my size, and he fights 185, I'm like dude, I'm, I'm bigger than you, so I think guys just need to, need to be disciplined and uh, yeah just be professionals man, uh, it takes money to make money. Congratulations. Hey, thank you guys, I really appreciate it. Stash. I will, I will, definitely. I'd like to see you with one. Oh man, that's good. That's a good one. <laughs>